Shelley Quinn. I'm J.D. Quinn. And we want to wish you a happy Sabbath. We're so glad that you're joining us. And we have three ABN Family Worship is, is going to be continuing this time with part three on spiritual warfare. Mm. Mm. And mm -hmm. it's going to be some good stuff. <laughs> so before we get started, would you like to introduce the rest of the family Most at the certainly. Table. I get to work with these two gentlemen oh. every day. We have a wonderful time in Jesus. Mm -hmm. We yeah. get to help those. That's Many great. people call in with spiritual warfare mm -hmm. issues, you know. That's Don right. Owen, Don will yes, get down the table. Yeah, it's a you blessing know. to be here. It's uh, just a, a great treat to be able to get in the Word of God and help encourage people. So Amen. It's a blessing. What you do every day. Oh, it's a Amen. blessing. It's huge. Daniel Perrin. That's right. It's good to be here. You know, I'm, I'm down the hall and around a corner from Donald, but his door is usually open so I can hear his spiritual warfare <laughs> down the hall, prayer for people on the phones. Mm. Yeah, I remember years ago, someone was, what's it like in pastoral? Mm. And mm -hmm. somebody that was in our group says, it's a trauma center. Mm. Oh yeah, that's a good and way it, to it, that's boy. Good. That's a good way mm. to explain there's, it. There's a lot of warfare going on mm -hmm. in pastoral here because mm -hmm. there's a lot of battles out there, a lot of hurting people. Yes. Some are relatively simple and a lot of them are deep, deep stuff. Mm -hmm. but anyway, God is the almighty one. That's right, amen. And, and you know, we've had a, an, an amazing response to the first two programs. Mm. So we're going to kind of summarize a little for, from the first two programs. But what we want to emphasize on this night is how we surrender this to God, cast our cares on Him, trust in mm. Him to fight mm. the, the battle for us, to equip us. That's right. And, and I won't go any further than that right now, mm. but the point is we want to give you some scripture promises mm -hmm. that you can hold on to, that you can claim, that you can pray back to the Lord. And just as Jesus in the wilderness, when Satan would come mm -hmm. against him, he, he, Satan would even quote scripture mm -hmm. out of context. Yes. And Jesus sure. would come back with, it is written. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna teach you tonight Hopefully, we'll get to a number of these. But first, yeah. honey, you want to have our opening prayer? Most certainly. Fathers, we come to you in the name of Jesus. We have to come to you in the name of Jesus, Lord. Father, we just ask that you be with us, Lord, that through the aid of the Holy Spirit, the right scriptures will come out of our mouth to give mm -hmm. you praise and glory and to call upon your name. So, Lord, we just plead that you will assist us. Plead, I plead blessing and prayers for all those that are watching yes, or listening, right. Lord. Mm -hmm. Father, we know that you get all the praise and all the glory. We love you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. amen. So I'm not even sure we, we don't, uh, we're not following an outline here. We have a list of scriptures, but here's the point. We're all in a spiritual mm -hmm. battle. We have Daily. looked mm -hmm. at Daily. the battleground mm -hmm. is where? Mm -hmm. The in battleground the, the mind. is mm -hmm. our mind. Right. And I want to start by making a comment, and then I'll back this up. A lot of us are fighting spiritual battles. And, and when we talk about spiritual warfare, it's learning to use God's weapons against mm -hmm. the enemy right. to overcome these yes. things. I will confess, mm. often I'm the last one to realize, I can recognize if anybody else is in a spiritual battle and I'll say, this is a spiritual battle. We need to pray, we need to do this. But sometimes Fearless. I'm in angst mm -hmm. for days mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and it's finally like, Lord, what's wrong with me? And then I realize mm. I'm in a spiritual battle mm -hmm. and I need to Amen. start using the weapons of his warfare. That's right. Amen. I'm going to start. Let's, let's read um, 2 Timothy 3.16 and you'll see that there's a reason for this because as I said, a lot of us are fighting battles we don't need to fight. 2 Timothy 3.16, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, that means teachings of God's truth, mm -hmm. for reproof and correction, 
which I pray for the Lord mm -hmm. to correct me, mm. for instruction mm -hmm. in righteousness. Mm. Mm, that's an interesting wow. one because all unrighteousness, the Bible says, all unrighteousness okay, right. is sin. Mm -hmm. If this is instruction in righteousness, it helps us to see areas that we need to confess and be cleansed of. And it says, um, and, well, and it says that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Mm. I'm going to add mm. that good work mm -hmm. is spiritual warfare. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. That now to go through it. Here's a related scripture, and the way I remember this, Second Timothy three sixteen, Second mm. Peter three mm -hmm. sixteen. So mm -hmm. let's turn to Second Peter three sixteen. And we're going to start with 316. And he speaks about how Paul, he starts, it says that Paul is, speaks in his epistles and things, things, some things which are hard to understand. Mm -hmm. it, it, they need to be meditated on. They need to be connected to the rest of his teachings. But then he makes this wonderful comment. He said, which untaught an unstable people twist mm. to their own destruction. We can take scripture mm -hmm. out mm -hmm. of context mm -hmm. and twist it to our own destruction as they do also the rest of the scriptures. Now listen to this warning. You therefore, beloved, since you know this beforehand, since you know that the devil, when he came to to Eve, what did he say? Did God really say, you shall not eat of all of the trees? And she's going, no, no, just this one. But he twists the scripture to say, you will not surely die. But he says, let's, he says, knowing these things beforehand, beware lest you also fall from your own steadfastness, mm. being led away with the error of the wicked. Now here's the solution. Grow in grace. This is verse 18, 2 Peter 3, 18. Grow in grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be the glory, mm. both now and forever. Amen. Oh, man. What does it mean to grow in grace? I think he's talking about going in our understanding of grace so that we know how to receive the gifts of God but grow in the knowledge of the Lord. Do you realize little word, little faith. Mm, big word. A lot no. of word, a big lot word, of big. faith. We go through spiritual battles because we don't know the word of That's God. That's right, yeah. We don't mm -hmm. know the way of yep. escape. And now I'm gonna preach a little minute sermon here. We've got to quit excusing the, young, the youth for not reading. You know, mm. people will say, oh, people just don't read anymore. And it's true. Yeah. We Lost are bringing up a whole generation and it's now affecting the older generations mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. But of people who have the attention of a hummingbird and they <laughs> sit here and they sit there and they sit here and they stroll through videos mm -hmm. and, and they're bored to tears. Mm -hmm because they're not engaging their brain. We have to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus mm -hmm. Christ. Right. Quit making excuses and saying that's the way it is. If that's the way it is, we're going to have a lost mm -hmm. Yeah, That's right, mm -hmm. yeah. All right, so- I agree. Yeah, if, yes, same concur. <laughs> if we know, and I know you're bringing your children up where they're not on, where they are learning to engage their Manage brain. They're properly. learning to do deep Bible studies. But I thought I'd kick this over to you now. If we know the scriptures, then the spiritual battles become easier mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. the battle 
belongs to the Lord. Right. Mm -hmm. yep. You know, you got you got to have some tools in your tool belt. You've got to have some stuff that you can rely on. So those of you who are out there watching, just get a get a little note card or something. I'm just gonna give you six Bible verses right here quickly in a row. I'm not gonna not gonna lecture about any one of them, but you just you kinda wanna have them right Promise. handy so when that unexpected time comes, you can remember, I know that. I know that's in the Bible and you don't have to hunt around for it. It's written down there. So the first one, and these are all going to be in the Old Testament. You're just going to write these down. The first one is in Deuteronomy chapter 3, verse 22. This is Moses reviewing Israel's history, what God has done for them. And then he tells Joshua, this is what you can expect. Here's what Deuteronomy 3, 22 says. And just apply this to your own life. You must not fear them, for the Lord your God himself fights for you. Hmm. All right, just take those words. Write that down, put that text down, Deuteronomy 3.22, and then we're going to move right on to the next one that Donald here is going to read. And this is in Deuteronomy 28, verse 7. This is in the, the chapter on the blessings and the curses. So uh, there, there's, there's both blessings and curses, mm -hmm. and this is on the blessing side. So just so you know that there's the curses side as well. If we depart from the Word of God, we can't expect all God's promises to be fulfilled. Right. So here's Deuteronomy 28. Beautiful promise, seven. Deuteronomy 28, verse 7 says... The Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before your face. Did you catch that? Before your face. They shall come out against you one way, and guess what they do? Flee before you seven ways. So what a beautiful thought. You know, it says, who rise against you, you they will be defeated before your face. They shall come out against you one way and flee before you seven ways. Mm -hmm. So God will scatter them. Amen. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful promise, isn't it? Yeah, it's mm -hmm. like they're the same promise. And so we realize God doesn't just tell us one time. But what about seven? Seven is a sign of completion. All right. Too. Full, yeah. completely get full rid victory. Of them. Yeah. Them. So All right. Yeah. The next one here is in Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 33, 27. This is Moses giving his farewell address. This is like final words. If there's anything to remember from Moses' experience. Deuteronomy 33, 27. And Shelley's got this one. Deuteronomy 33, 27 is one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. And I use it all the time when people are going through a difficult time. And I remember it. It says, the eternal God is your refuge. Mm -hmm. And underneath are the everlasting mm -hmm. arms. Mm -hmm. And I think mm -hmm. of God oh, yeah. carrying me through, holding me close to his bosom. But then it says, he will thrust out mm. the enemy from before you and will say, destroy. Amen. So when we are fighting, especially a spiritual battle, remember last time we talked about 1 John 4, 4, mm -hmm. greater is he who is in you than he who's in the world. If When we cast our cares on the Lord, as Peter says to do, knowing that he cares for us. He fights this mm -hmm. battle for us. He destroys mm -hmm. the enemy mm. while he's carrying you through. I love it. That makes That's me right. think of uh, the Red Sea experience. I mean, he put that pillar of cloud by day and pillar of fire, so he was protecting them. Amen. And he destroyed the enemies as they were getting onto dry land and the water just crashes over the mm -hmm. Pharaoh and his army. Mm -hmm. So he Amen. protected them. And it says, Amen. the Lord will fight for you and hold your peace. Amen. So. I've used this text on the phone many times, that image of the everlasting arms. Mm. You know, it's something visible because I can, I can picture Amen. that. Mm -hmm. right? I can picture that. It's beautiful. All right, the next one is not, not uh, Moses's, but this is now Joshua, the next generation. This is his farewell message that he gives to Israel that J.D. has got in Joshua 23, verse 10. 23, verse 10, this is God fighting for us. Mm -hmm. That's what we're talking about mm -hmm. here. Right. Spiritual battles are, we have to have God. One man of you chase a thousand, for the Lord your God is he who mm -hmm. fights for you as he promised you. So it, this he that's fighting for us, that's promising us, that's capital H-E. Mm. So thank you, Jesus, that uh, turn it over to him. Why are you gonna go up? I mean, that's, the enemy's bigger than Goliath. So mm -hmm. you better- you Can't see what you're fighting either. Yeah, exactly. So thank you. And, and we remember from Ephesians 6, 12, mm -hmm. fight against flesh. that God says, we're not fighting against flesh and blood. Mm -hmm. We're talking mm -hmm. about spiritual battles. We're right. talking about the principalities and the powers of the air. And I'm going to tell you, it could be 
a fight that's going on between you and your mother-in-law, you and your child, you and a co-worker. It There's could be someone making you feel like less than a person. It mm. could be you wondering if God even cares mm -hmm. for you. There's so many ways that the devil comes in and, and sometimes we feel like our struggle is against flesh and mm. blood, but God is the one who's going to fight for us and we know. Sometimes too, we feel like we're the only one that's ever experienced that battle. Oh, oh yeah. Right. We kind of isolate ourselves. Well, nobody else goes through. I'm, I'm the only one that's experienced yeah, something. So like we this. don't want to tell anybody. We don't right. want to get help. <laughs> right. And sometimes we're embarrassed. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody mm -hmm. had called in because I think it was our last program that I mentioned. Don't think that because we're sitting here yeah. on television oh, and we know a lot of the word that we don't go through spiritual battles. I'm telling you that the battles are sometimes more fierce for those on the front lines because mm -hmm. when you're really doing something for the Lord, right. Satan is angry and he's after you. Yeah. And he we, comes at, you know, I always warn people when they come to work at 3 a.m. be prepared. And we see it, especially the first year where people, their homes are attacked, their cars are breaking down. I mean, the family's attacked. You gotta be prayed up. Mm -hmm. Okay. Praise the Lord. Uh, this next one text that we have on our list, we really want to share with you. It's in 2 Chronicles 20, verse 15, but this text has been so meaningful to me that I got to share another piece of the text too. Mm. And uh, I remember, I remember it's, so I, I want to share also 2 Corinthians 20, verse 12. I remember a time facing a, facing a big issue and I remember getting up in the middle of the night and going into a closet and shutting the door, turning on the light in the closet and laying my Bible out on the ground, this Bible right here and this text. Uh, as Jehoshaphat is the king and they're facing a, a confederated mm. army of, of, I don't know, a couple different groups coming at them. And there was no chance in a million mm. that they could be victorious. Mm -hmm. And he says, oh, mm. our God, will you not judge against them? And then here's, here's the part, for we have no power mm. against this great multitude that is coming against us, nor do we know what to do, but our eyes are upon you. Mm. And you know, there comes times in your life when you are gonna say that very thing. I don't know what to do, and I couldn't do it even if I knew what to do. Lord, I'm, I, my eyes are on you, that's it. But then the next part of this text, moving a little farther in verse 15 uh, of chapter 20 of, of 2 Chronicles, says, thus says the Lord to you, do not be afraid nor dismayed because of this great multitude, for the battle's not yours but God's. Amen. I, I love this text. Amen. And you're, you're going to start to love texts as they have meaning right. because I applied that text in mm. that situation. And now this is my text. Yes. And it's my promise that mm. the Lord has given to me. Amen. Personal. And what was the one from, was it Second Chronicles? That was both of those from Second Chronicles oh, okay. 20, verse second, 12 and 15. So second, second Chronicles 20, verse 12 and 15. It's beautiful. And also like the verse 17, mm -hmm. you have it right there. Sure, you will not need to fight in this battle. Position yourselves, stand still and see the salvation mm. of the Lord who is with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Do not, be, do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them for the Lord is with you. And it, later on in the chapter, how do they go out and fight? Yeah, it's with it's, singing. It's with praising. Yeah. I know. Praising the Lord. And, and, and that is, you know, we know people who have really been fighting demonic oppression. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. We know a, a ministry couple, and when they first told me this, it was kind of like, whoa. They moved into mm -hmm. a home and they said they'd go to bed at night Either. and mm -hmm. the bed would start coming up and down. Off, mm -hmm. And they knew they were fighting mm -hmm. demonic oppression and they'd been working with someone who practiced voodoo. Mm -hmm. They were trying to minister to a family of someone, uh, their grandfather practiced voodoo. So you know what they did? Just like we just read, the they, they said, mm -hmm. okay, God inhabits the praises of mm -hmm. his people. They Let's put sing. on praise music, they'd sit up all night long singing and it, be and it ceased, it ceased. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, if, you, okay. if you've got some fighting going on in your house, mm -hmm. the best way to stop that is just sing a happy song. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. It starts to go away. All right, the last one, these are just like quick promises to, to read, is in Psalm 44, verse 5. And Donald's going to read this. Yeah, I really like this. Uh, it reminds me when I was in school and getting bullied by people. It says, mm. through you, we will push down our enemies. 
through your name, we will trample those who rise up against us. And I, I like that part says, through your name. Mm -hmm. I think that's what Jesus, what you were saying earlier in the wilderness, he would uh, say, it is written. And that's the power comes through the word. And we realize the, uh, the, that we're saying, applying it to our lives and using that in any instance that we have some kind of case that's getting, going against us and seeing how God does push back our enemies. He does mm -hmm. push back those things. Mm -hmm. And waiting on the Lord is so important. Amen and amen. And we talked in our first program, I believe it was, about Ephesians chapter 6, verses 11 through 18, the whole armor of God. Let me Amen. just give it to you quick. There was the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, your feet shodded and prepared with mm -hmm. the gospel of peace, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, sword of the spirit, and mm. the word of God, which is our only um, offensive mm -hmm. weapon. If you miss that program, you can go to 3ABM Plus or look on YouTube for the Spiritual Warfare Part 1 because it was really a good program. Mm. But we see that God, I mean, we just read six promises. There's so many mm -hmm. more. Mm -hmm. But God has always been there for you and you're fighting battles that you don't have to fight. You need to get the Lord involved and he will fight them for you. He will show you how. And all of this protective armor from Ephesians chapter 6, the only thing that's the offensive weapon mm. is the Word of God. Amen. That's what Jesus used in the wilderness. It is written. But now we're going to give you a few promises to use against the devil and, and to help if the battleground is our mind, we just looked at 2 Peter 3.18 mm -hmm. mm -hmm. that says people twist, twist the scriptures. It. If you don't understand fully, and we'll get to one of my pet peeves is when somebody says, oh, nobody puts on us more than we can stand. We're going to look at that in a minute. Mm -hmm. But here's what we've got to remember. Satan's weapons, what were his weapons mm -hmm. in the battle that was fought in heaven? Lies. Mm -hmm. He was trafficking right. lies. So How did he start this great controversy, the cosmic conflict on earth? Lies. Mm -hmm. He he knows enough of the word that he'll use 80% word and twist it. And then guess what? The battleground for spiritual warfare, the or spiritual battle, it's in your mind. Second mm -hmm. Corinthians 10, 10 verses 4, 4, and 5, 4 and 5 talks yeah. about you, that we, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty to pulling down the strong. strongholds and right. taking our thoughts captive to make them obedient. Are you taking your thoughts captive? When you've got all of these negative thoughts, the only way you can replace the right. negative yeah. thought is to have the Jesus Word Marie. of God Amen. to replace it. So Amen. here's Amen. one of my favorite scriptures. L write this down. This passage is 1 Corinthians 10, mm. 12 through 13. Donald, will you do that one? Please? Oh, yes. Thank you. Um, it says, therefore, let him... 1 Corinthians 10, 12 through 13. I just want to make sure people got to sure. write First that Corinthians down. 10, 12 through 13. Three times repeat. That's good. Therefore, let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. No temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. But God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with the temptation will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. And mm -hmm. thinking on this, you know, uh, years ago, uh, I fell in my, found myself getting into this aspect of pornography. I've been pretty open about it on some of the um, programs here. But finding, for me, what's been very uh, productive is finding out my value and my worth and what God says about me, Amen. His Word. Because wait, I didn't... Wait a minute. I want to hit the pause button. What you just said, I'm going to tell you something. There are so many pastors of various denominations, and it's not just men. Women are falling into mm -hmm. pornography. This is a huge mm -hmm. spiritual battle. It is not right. Grace doesn't cover. Just because you're saved by grace doesn't mean that you can continue in this sin. It is adultery. Oh, yes. I mean, mm -hmm. Jesus said, 
You've heard it said that you shall not commit adultery. I say if you lust after right. another one, you've already committed adultery mm -hmm. in your heart. Right. So this was a huge spiritual battle. You were trapped in it for a number mm -hmm. of years. Yeah. How did God bring you out? Well, first I had to want to be cleansed. I had, but make you, sure, I had to make sure, I had to tell him I got a problem, I'm struggling with mm -hmm. this, and I had to be accountable, and I had to ask the Lord to help me. So, and I had to tell some folks, which is kind of embarrassing, so there's that shame, guilt mm -hmm. aspect, you know, people don't sure. want, Satan holds you in that little shame, guilt cycle, like, ah, what if people know about this about me? But every one of us have filthy rags, we're all dirty. Mm -hmm. And some people see certain sins a little more worse than others. When I did prison ministry, people in there, the guys were in there for pedophilia. People are, oh, they're the scum of the earth. But you hear their stories. That is not so. You hear what they've been through. And their, their youth and what happened to them, you realize why yeah. they acted the way they did. Mm -hmm. doesn't make it right. But however, you've got to confess that. You've got to give it to the Lord. You've got to confess that you have done something wrong. You've offended God, but you've also offended those that He's created too. It's not just God, but you're also created. And uh, giving that to Him and being accountable, and that's very difficult because now you're being vulnerable before people are like, I don't know. I don't know about that guy. Cause but he's take, take me back just a little bit. You, when you recognized it was a sin, how did you recognize it was really a sin? I mean, did you just start feeling dirty? Did you always feel bad about it? Did you know enough of the word? Where, no, where did know. God, you, you know, make the way of escape for you? I, I guess, yeah, the thing is, as you realize inside, or just something that's dirty and filthy, you know it. It's like it just hits you because... I mean, you, you can feel like your, your senses, just the emotions kick in and they talk about your brain. You're talking about the brain. The amygdala gets stimulated and, you, and there's things you Dopamine. Can do. Yeah, and you've got to release it. Mm -hmm. yeah. So now you're doing other acts towards yourself, which I won't go into great detail. But the fact is that you, you know that these things are keeping you in darkness. Mm -hmm. And you can, you can just feel like this heaviness and you don't want to be around people. You separate yourself because what if people knew? You're really isolating yourself because Satan wants to really destroy you. That's well, goal. let me ask this. So, as you progress in this habit, mm -hmm. it becomes more frequent. Mm -hmm. Does that mean that through the aid of the Holy Spirit, you're being reminded more, or do you just kind of put up a shield or a, a oh, so you're like quenching insulate you so that you really don't pay any attention? Well, this is who I am. I was born like this, Lord. Father, you're the one that's going to help me. No, I've got wax in my ears. I can't hear you, Lord. And then you just continue to progress to a place, someplace where the Holy Spirit overrides. This is not right. Yeah, I think what you say sometimes, J.D., aren't you sick and tired of being sick and tired? Amen. So you get sick and tired of it. You're like, this is just, it's mm -hmm. destroying me. It's killing me. Mm -hmm. So it was a godly sorrow that brings yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. So like, I just can't do this anymore. So, you know, when you come clean of that, and then there's such a peace. And I remember when we first got rid of our stuff. I won't go into all the detail, but it just like, it was a washing, like it's just a flood. You know, my mm. wife would tell you the same thing. So I just feel so much peace mm. because mm. Satan is keeping you in that darkness and that sin. And, and I loved what you said, and I didn't mean to cut it off earlier. Sorry. When you said that you had to learn your value, you know, that's, that's the problem is some people don't understand Many. their value. Many. Many do not understand. Yeah, they don't. Value. And what's exciting sitting over here on the side watching you grow. Oh, yeah. I mean, you've been here four or five years, and I've watched you actually grow, mm, mature, in a very positive way. Amen. Praise and so and it, it is paying dividends. And it was the Word of God. I mean, yes. and he's like a walking Bible. He can, he can mm -hmm. just, uh, yep. audio Bible, he it's can a gift. just spit it, a gift. spit it back. But, well, and it's that's, a lot of time spent in mm -hmm. the Word. It's important. That, that's the thing is if you're, not, if, you're not eating, if you're not feeding on the Word of God, what are you feeding on? You have to be fee on the Word of God. This is our only safety blanket. Mm -hmm. We're going to go some dark times here. I'm telling you, mm -hmm. we're heading for some dark days. And if we're not in this and learning this, we're really on some shaky mm -hmm. ground. We need to be in this. Okay, Seriously. so that comes back to what I said earlier about holding people accountable to read and study and not, I mean, they, we got to get off all these devices. Remember, the devil's yeah. weapon is lies. The battleground is our mind and the only way to overcome those lies is by knowing the truth. And I want to add one thing. We got to get going here, but I wanted to add one thing for this story. If you find that your battle is 
maybe you're overeating, you're overindulging, or if it is pornography, or if it is watching X-rated movies, I mean, well, same thing almost, but whatever your battle is, hold, write this scripture reference down. Romans 13, 14. Well, I'll begin with actually 13, 13. He says, Paul's writing to the Romans, let us walk properly. Walk is how we act in following mm -hmm. God, We're walking with God. Right. As in the day, not in revelry and drunkenness, mm -hmm. not lewdness and lust, not in strife and envy, but here's verse 14, it's just a punch. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lust. You're trying to give up cigarettes, you can't have them in the house. You're trying to give up drinking, empty those bottles, toss out those mm -hmm. cigarettes. If you're trying to give up pornography, you've got to do what you said. You've got to clean, get all of that stuff out of the house. Make no provision. God will never let you be tempted beyond what you're able. He, he'll protect you. But boy, you've got to cooperate right. and not make provisions. Just for say, the if anybody's interested, if you're watching right now and you might need some resources, please reach out to us so we can get you resources, especially if you're struggling with pornography. Mm -hmm. uh, we can connect you with some uh, places that can help you to either be held accountable or something that can get you out because we don't want to see you stuck in that. We want to help you as a brother in Christ or sister get you out. And I wanted to also share something. Proverbs 7, if you haven't read that chapter, read that chapter. I encourage you at home, read that chapter. When you open that chapter, for me, what the Lord is showing me is it's God watching out of his window, watching you go into, more myself, go into sin. And what happens when you go into sin? And basically at the end of verse 27, it kills you, it destroys you. So just to encourage you to read that and see how God sees sin and what he's looking at when you're wandering through the dark alleys at night, wandering through the streets and you're seeking to sin. It wants to kill you. So well. Ooh, I got all kinds of scriptures popping into my mind. <laughs> I want you to write this down because oh, I've used this one so often. Psalm 129 mm -hmm. in verse 4. And it says, Psalm 129, verse 4, the Lord is righteous. Mm -hmm. He has cut in pieces mm -hmm. the cords of the Amen. wicked. Excellent. Mm -hmm. And Praise you know, Lord. when the wicked, when, when, the principalities, the demons have got their tendons. It's like an octopus. Yeah. And they got you all tangled up in that. God will cut you mm -hmm. free from that. You've got to look to him. And I'm going to give you a, a scripture that I love because I prayed this for my sister who was deep in drugs for many years. And this is Acts 26, verse 18. Mm -hmm. This is when Jesus... In, uh, Paul encounters Jesus on the road to Damascus and the bright light shines around, the presence of the Lord shining down around Paul. And, and he's calling, he's going to call Paul to become a minister of his grace. Mm. And, and so he's, Paul's the greatest ambassador mm -hmm. for grace in the New Testament to me. But he says to, to Paul, I am calling you to open their eyes, Acts 26, 18, to open their eyes, turn them from darkness to light, Amen. from the power of Satan to me, that they may have an inheritance among those who are sanctified mm. by faith in me. I prayed that over my sister for mm -hmm. years. And God did open her eyes. Amen. And she spent the last 30 years of her life before she died drug free. Amen. So, and, and when I say my sister mm -hmm. was a drug addict, she had been gang raped as a 13 year old child, but mm. she was doing hardballs, speedballs, mm -hmm. what they call it, where, think, what is it? Okay, I think it's like, speedballs, where yeah. they put heroin and cocaine together. Mm -hmm. You talk to most doctors and they'll say, you can't get somebody off that. Mm. God delivered her mm -hmm. overnight. <laughs> overnight. Lord. So, okay. Now, oh. that beautiful promise that we just read, 
You want to comment on it, that God will always provide a way of escape. He is faithful. Well, I just, I think about, uh, you know, the image that comes to my mind is plucking out sin by the roots. Mm -hmm. yes, you know, God, roots. God doesn't want to just, you know, clip off the, you know, the grass that's growing, but to really reach inside and change us from the inside out. And that's, you know, that's the power that he's giving is saying, you know, Donald, Daniel, each one of you, I don't want to just change your behavior. I want, I want your heart. And I'm going to, I'm going to give you that change of heart that gives you the ability to withstand temptation through my grace, mm. through his. Did you know you just hit on this, the, the whole mm -hmm. of the gospel. God wants your heart. Mm -hmm. You know, you can have all of the, uh, you can have all this appear but if it doesn't travel those 18 inches mm -hmm. from your heart, I mean, from your head to your heart, doesn't matter. You could be, have a THD, a, a doctorate mm -hmm. in theology. And if it's all just up here and you can prattle it off, if you're not in love with the Lord, if you don't have that covenant love relationship with him, you're not saved. Mm -hmm. So it's going from here mm -hmm. to here. That's what God's yeah. looking for. Right. And he, is so faithful, he'll never let you be tempted beyond. Now we're going to throw something in that kind of fits in here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to let you read this one, J.D. Oh. And here's why. I can never read 1 Corinthians 10, 12 through 13 without going to, to 2 Corinthians 1, 8 through 11. Why? Because people misquote this idea that you know, God will never let us yeah. be tempted beyond what we're able. And they will say, God will never put on us more than what we're able to handle. Mm -hmm. That's not what the Apostle Paul says. So let's look at the right way to look at this, honey. Second Corinthians 1, 8 through 11. Okay. Uh, for we do not want to be ignorant, brethren, of our trouble which came to us in Asia, that we were burdened beyond measure. Mm -hmm. Beyond measure we were burdened above strength so that we despaired even for our lives. So, so let me just pause right there. Does that sound like God's put on them more than they can stand? Mm -hmm. yep. I would say so. Oh. Okay, in verse nine. So that we despaired even of life. Yes, we had the sentence of death in ourselves that we should not, well, this is where it gets powerful. Yeah, now, and, and here's, let me, let me give okay. you the transition. Mm -hmm. Yes, we have the sentence of death in ourselves, that, when you see that or so mm -hmm. that, here's the purpose, that's, that's introducing a purpose statement. So what was God's purpose in allowing more than they could handle that? That we should not trust in ourselves, but in God. Mm -hmm who raises the dead, who delivered us from such a great death Amen. and does deliver us in whom we trust that he will still deliver us. Also, you also helping together in prayer for us that thanks may be given by many persons on our behalf for the gift granted to us through many. But we could spend some time wow. on this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so God, will allow, I mean, you know, I, I just get sad when people call and they'll, they'll be telling me all that's going on in their lives and it's horrible. And then all of a sudden they invalidate their own feelings, their own truth, and they'll say, but God never puts on us more than we can stand. So yeah, I've had three deaths in my family and I'm now sick and da da da, you know, all in this last month and, and our house burned down at the same time. And, but God never puts on us. That's more than you can mm -hmm. humanly stand. Yeah. But God only, if it's, if it's allowed by God, it's because he's got a purpose. Donald, you're about to explode down there. I was just thinking, you know, I keep seeing the Staples commercial. Do you remember that Staples commercial? They had this big red easy button. You can oh, yeah. tap it and yeah. oh, there, everything's easy. But if, if we could do that with the gospel, just tap it and it's easy, then why would we really need Jesus? Amen. And we, we wouldn't just, need him. And we just keep pushing the envelope <laughs> and pushing the envelope and envelope and then because, hey, we can get rid of this. And I wanted to tackle something else too. I had an individual, I'll name who it was, somebody close to me. But anyways, they told me they were saved at the age of 15. 
praise the Lord, but are you reading the Word of God? Because, you know, it's one thing to say you're saved, but are you having a personal relationship with Him daily? Amen. You need to have that daily. Just because you say you're saved, that's one thing, but it's a continuous process. It's not something that's just instantaneous. You're done. You don't have any part in it. You need to be involved. You need to study this. You need to walk, as we are talking about earlier, walk in the, the right direction. It's really important. And, and this, we're giving you these scriptures because this is the sword of the Spirit. Let mm -hmm. me, let me, I want to go back to that this minute. The sword of the Spirit is, when we talk about the, in Ephesians 6, it says the sword of the Spirit, which is mm -hmm. listed in the weapons of our warfare. It says it's the Word of God. So most people say, here's the sword of the Spirit. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. The Bible is the Lagos Word of God, L-O-G-O-S. Some people say Lagos, some say Logos. I used to say the latter, but I hear that Lagos is correct. Mm. But many people will say, this is your, the sword of your spirit. No. The word there for the word that is the sword of the spirit is rhema. That means this is the sheath that holds the word, but the sword of the Spirit is that promise that you take out and personally apply. Mm -hmm. Like go. Second Chronicles, mm -hmm. that became a sword of the mm -hmm. Spirit. That became your verse. Mm -hmm. It's a rhema word. That means it's personal, that you're putting it into practice. Right. And I guarantee you what, that's why studying, I don't know about you, but the more I study the Word of God, some days I feel like I'm doing really well. And then I start reading and think, oops. Hmm. And, you know, Lord, I need cut. to surrender this area to you. Word cut. But it is so important that we remain steadfast. He says, um, oh, I'm going to find it. Anyway, it isn't a salvation at one age and saying once saved, always saved. You can't say that. Throughout the Bible, Jesus himself said, he who endures to the end. Peter tells us, be steadfast. You know, you're saved if you remain steadfast. Where is that scripture? My mind went blank. Well, while you're <laughs> looking that scripture up, <clears throat> I want to go back to this because we do pray for people. Oh yeah, I'm glad you are. And this is 2 Corinthians 1, 8, 11. Mm. If you wonder if you have any value, you also helping together in prayer for us. Mm. This is he's, after he's talking about being burdened beyond measure. Yeah. But now he's He says, back. hey guys, thank you, thank you, thank you a thousand trillion times for praying for us. There was that covering the gap, you know, you interceded in our behalf. Mm -hmm. I don't know how this all works, but I can just imagine if it takes a million angels, they'll be there. Mm -hmm. If it takes one angel, he'll be there. He's always on time, but we can assist in that. We can help make a positive difference in people's lives yeah. by just taking a few minutes Amen. maybe to have a special prayer. You know, you just made me think about Peter when he's in the chains, he's surrounded by these soldiers and the angel comes and pokes him in the side mm -hmm. and he gets out of there and he's still kind of groggy and he finally wakes up and he's like, oh, I'm actually free now. So he walks and finds a home and they're all in there praying for Peter and he knocks on the door and a young lady opens, hey, it's Peter, and shuts the door in his face. Why would you do that? Anyway, shuts the door in his face, and I, hey, Peter's at the door. I'll come on, we're praying for him. Just leave us alone, we're praying for him. I'm like, no, he's at the door. I'm like, what? Rhoda. So they find out that they were, their prayers are being answered. He's right there at the door saying, let me in, please. So that's really and, true. And it makes you think about Daniel's prayer when he mm -hmm. was praying and mm -hmm. a couple of weeks passed, mm -hmm. and when Gabriel shows yes. up, he says, you were heard the first yeah. day, but there was... I was sent the moment you prayed. The yeah. moment, yeah. Your, but your there prayers are answered. It mm -hmm. was a spiritual mm -hmm. battle in the heavenly realms. Mm -hmm. So, see, we don't know everything. God's the only one that knows the mm -hmm. end from the beginning and sees it all. And this is why, as Peter says, mm -hmm. cast your cares on yeah. Him because mm -hmm. He cares for you. But in in... If you don't, uh, I'm going to say this. Remember what we were talking about, that sometimes it's hard to confess? Mm -hmm. Sometimes be careful who you do confess Right, that's to. a great point. Very good point. Be because sure. somebody, the devil, you confess mm -hmm. 
mm -hmm. your problems to somebody as an accountability partner. If they're not trustworthy and they're going to share it, and I'm going to tell you, if somebody tells you something, we, we are repositories of so many secrets that we've mm -hmm. been told. And, you know, when somebody says, can I, I want to share something with you, I always ask them if I can share with him. There's only a few that I haven't been able to. And, and I don't know why it's, it's kind of important when you're told mm -hmm. something to be able mm -hmm. to share it Two, with, one, between one. us. But the point is, if you are a person that someone tells something to, and you go to someone and say, oh, you know, Cindy's having a really big problem. Uh, she's got a problem with lust, so let's pray for her. Sometimes people gossip mm -hmm. using prayer, oh, prayer as an excuse. Mm. So we've got to be careful who you talk to. And sometimes, you know, there's been times that I've been going through a spiritual battle that I will reach out to several, like Paul did, and just say, I'm in a spiritual battle, and I don't always mm -hmm. have to name it. Please pray. Mm -hmm. But don't try to face it alone. Mm -hmm. That's right. Amen. Okay. I'm sure it All right. Let's look at Daniel. How about you take Romans 12, verses 17 mm. through 21. Write this one down. Two. Romans 12, 17 through 21. Because when you're in a spiritual battle, maybe it is between an in-law co-worker, we've got to know if we want God to fight for us, we've got to stand on the side of God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is a great text. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Romans 12, the whole chapter is wonderful, but these yes. verses, starting with verse 17, repay no one evil for evil. Mm -hmm. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. If it is possible, as much as depends on you, mm -hmm. live peaceably with all men. Pause. So doesn't that say it's not always possible mm -hmm, to, mm -hmm. if you're, it is possible. possible. But don't, don't let it be because you're stirring up the conflict. Yeah. You do, you do your part. Uh, let's see. Beloved, do not avenge yourselves. Don't get even. Don't make them pay. Don't make sure you get, uh, you're, you're uplifted in the eyes of others. Do not avenge yourselves. So, so somebody on Ooh. Facebook that says something Quit. Please, if you claim to be a Christian, please don't be battling back and forth these crazy, silly arguments on Facebook. Go ahead. It's not going to get solved there. All yeah. right. Someone is always going to be wrong on the internet. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Just leave them be. Do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, Amen. says the Lord. Mm -hmm. Therefore, if your enemy is hungry, mm. feed him. If he's thirsty, give him a drink. For in so doing, you will heap coals of fire on his head. And then here's the spiritual warfare instruction right here. Mm -hmm. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Mm. That, yeah. I mean, that is a powerful tool in spiritual warfare. And for today it's too. To overcome evil with good. Just, mm. It's so interesting. Uh, one of the reasons that we have prisoners, of the, the uh, parameters around how we treat prisoners of war is it came from this passage. It came from being good to your enemy, not, to, I mean, it's interesting when you look back on how some of these laws came to be. But people sometimes don't understand. It says, in so doing, you will heap coals of fire on his head when you're good to an enemy. In the Egyptian, I believe it was the Egyptian, yeah, it was Egyptian culture. If someone was in a mode of repentance, this would be... Uh, they're sorry for something they did. They had this hat, hmm. like a miter's cap almost, but then it had a flat metal shelf on it and they would put coals of fire hmm. on there. 
and do this dance with these coals of fire, and it was to show repentance. Mm. So I think when he says, in, in so doing, you heap coals of fire on his head, if you're good to an enemy, you can see people's reactions. If they've done something bad to you and you're turning around and, and good to them, it's kind of like, what? Yeah. And they, they react in a way that it's unexpected what you're doing. It's something that makes them begin to feel maybe a little guilt and remorse yeah. and heaps coals of fire on their head. Yeah. So, so let's connect that. Honey, you want to read Matthew 5, 44, because Jesus said the same thing. This is where Paul's getting it. But I say to you. Matthew 5, 44 and 45, if yes. you're writing these down. But I say to you, love your enemies, mm -hmm. bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be sons of your Father in heaven. For he makes his sun rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. Mm. He makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good and sends rain on the just and the unjust. Let's unpack that a little. Well, it's hard to it's hard to hate someone you're praying for. Yes, I mean, that's true. I guess you could do it. You could muscle your way through, I guess, maybe, but it's hard to hate someone you're praying for. Uh, so pray for people. I heard someone preaching recently who said, I won't, I won't criticize anybody I don't pray for. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's good. Yeah. That's a, a good, good way to say good it. Good thing to say. Donald? There's a, I don't, I'm not huge on movies. However, there's a movie I did watch. Uh, I don't know if you've heard of um, Richard and Sabina Wormbrand. They were tortured with Christ. They were in Romania back in, during the uh, World War mm -hmm. II with uh, Nazism. And if you watch the one about Sabina, it's actually on, you can find YouTube too. But uh, there's a scene in there that is the most, almost brings me to tears even saying it, but she had this gentleman who killed her whole family, just killed them all. He gave the orders to kill them. He became a neighbor in their apartment complex. And the husband heard this guy just slathering drunk and stuff and came out in the hallway and said, hey, why don't you come over and play piano? I'll play piano for you in their apartment. So they're playing piano. I said, by the way, I want to, I want to tell you something. My wife's going to do something for you. I'm going to let her know that you're the one that murdered her whole family. And she's going to come out. She's going to do things for you. First of all, she's going to kiss you on the cheek. She's going to go and make you a meal. She's going to give you a hug. And that's mm. exactly what she did. She came out there. He, she kissed mm. him on both sides of the cheek. She went over and made him a meal, sat him down, and they fed him. He's like, what are you doing to this? And he started just crying, weeping. He became their friend. Mm. He, they, he helped them. She heaped coals and burning <laughs> fire on yeah. his head. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's a power. Um, I love what you said. I, I'm, mm. I've told this story before. I'll try to keep it short. J.D. and I had a business partner that put us $250,000 in debt. He was a Middle Eastern man, and when I was uncovering some of his scheme, and I was in Luxembourg, I got news that he'd put out mm. a hit mm. on me. Mm. And so I spent several weeks in Europe watching over my shoulder thinking I could be killed. First time I ever hated anyone in my life. Mm. I mean, I was over wow. 30 years old, but I felt hatred. And I remember praying, and God told me to forgive him as I'd been forgiven. And I'm like, no way, Lord, at least I repented for you to forgive me. I said, he's not sorry for his sin. He kept telling me to forgive, forgive, and reminding me of this. And so he said, pray for his forgiveness. So finally, I talked very openly with the Lord because he knows my heart. And I said, okay, I'll pray for him, but you know that I don't mean it. Because, mm. <laughs> you know, he said, pray for his salvation. And I was like, let him rot, you know where. You know, I mean, <laughs> I was very open with the Lord. But I prayed dutifully. And I was praying for his salvation. And suddenly, mm. it was probably mm. about two weeks but suddenly I realized I was almost weeping for this man's salvation. Mm -hmm. I realized mm -hmm. how lost and suffering he was. See, I, I believe that forgiveness is a gift that God gives us. And I think prayer is the key mm -hmm. to unlock when you're praying for someone mm -hmm. to forgive. And I ask the Lord, I love this. And you know what? That's spiritual warfare. When you have hatred or unforgiveness in your heart, bitterness, I ask the Lord, 
give me an illustration, Lord, so I can show people what this is. And he showed me this stream coming down from the hill into a valley and, and put an anchor, a, a little piece of wire on this side and anchor it on the other side and then trash coming down. What happens when it hits that wire? The, the trash collects, it begins to build. And just like a mm -hmm. beaver would build a dam piece by piece, that little stream gets turned, uh, you know, it, mm -hmm. it can't flow anymore. Mm -hmm. And God said to me, that wire is like unforgiveness in your mm. heart. Mm. And he said, if you do not forgive, all the trash of life begins to collect around that unforgiveness in right. your heart. That's you get bitter beautiful. and pretty soon, guess what? The living water of the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. can no longer flow through you. Mm -hmm. I can't believe our time has already gone. Yes. And, you know, we had a six page study. This is already <laughs> uh, our, our third one. I think we may have a fourth one. Our prayer for you is that God is taking these scripture promises mm -hmm. and helping you mm -hmm. see what's available to you as his mm -hmm. child. Your value to him. That's right. he, yeah. You're worth nothing less to God than the price he paid for amen. you That's right. with his precious blood. That's amen to that. So much. Thank you. Amen. We, yeah. we thank you so much, Donald, for being here, amen. Daniel, mm -hmm. for being here. Amen. Honey, it's always, it's always wonderful to amen. spend the Sabbath together. Mm -hmm. We pray that the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, our love of the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit is with you always. God bless. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath.